And a pleasant good evening to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network. Get used to this look behind me, because as of, what was it, uh, well, we got two more spring football games coming up tomorrow night uh, here on the network. Tomorrow night, you're going to see a jamboree with uh, John Carroll, Melbourne, and MCC, and uh, you're also going to see live from the Viper Pit, Father, the Father Lopez Green Wave, and the Space Coast Vipers. But in general, get used to the look behind me because it is the look for the next two months that you'll see more than any other. As spring sports has come to an end uh, here in Brevard County, it's always a sad time because it's the end of the school year. But yet, I know many of you out there watching uh, relish this time of the year is the kids are now home. Uh, coaches don't have uh, anything to do. No, I'm just kidding. I know this is their busiest time of the year. We kick off our spring football recaps here tonight uh, with the head coach of the Veer Hawks as he gets set to enter into their second season. Last year, the Hawks were 5-4 and four and barely, barely just missed out on a bid in the playoffs. And uh, so please help me welcome here tonight to recap exactly what happened over the spring. And by the way, coming up at eight o'clock, we're gonna have John Holmes from the Titusville Terriers to recap the Terrier spring. But right now, uh, please help me welcome in uh, Tony Gullah from the Vieira Hawks. And coach, first of all, thanks for taking time uh, to do this tonight. Uh, it's been a whirlwind to try to get this accomplished with you, mainly just because of how successful spring sports have been. Thanks for being here. Uh, Coach, I guess the first question is, how was your spring? Well, well first of all, thanks for having me, Alan. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be on. Um, we had some questions going into spring. Um, we had questions on offense with depth, um, certain positions. So it was experimental for us. We were going to try some new things and see how it goes. And, um, you know, and, and, and it was... It, it turned out okay. We found out, you know, some some things were lacking. We found some, some found out some things that we're, we're good at. So we'll see moving through the summer and, and into the season. I, I guess, Coach, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I I didn't ask you this question. And the question is obviously. Two months ago, the program was dealt a blow uh, as your quarterback from the last couple of years has decided to play elsewhere next year. And, and we all, you know, we wish Chase well, but obviously it leaves, uh, it, it, you know, so close to spring football and with plans coming next year. Um, being a veteran coach that you are and, and the success that you've had, I know that you've gone through a lot of things in your coaching career. Um, but how, how, how were, how, how will, how will how have you adapted to this uh, in the spring, and, and what's the plan for the VR offense there? Well, one of the things I learned a long time ago is you can't get tied into one certain offense or one certain defense. You got to taper what you're doing to the talent that you have. Um, it's not like college where you can recruit certain players to fit certain positions or certain molds. Um, you know, we weren't going to take a round peg and stick it into a square hole. So we had to look at what we had coming back from last season, and, and we had uh, two kids that played a little bit of the quarterback last year. Um, Eric Nelson was, was our backup, and um, and Noah Rennes was our short yardage quarterback that we used a little bit earlier in the season. So we took a look at those kids, and you know what was the best thing that we could come up with that would, would fit their, their talents. And uh, so I did some studying uh, of some teams, uh, some college programs over the last couple of months. And, and we came up with a pretty good package that fit, fit their skill sets. That's good to hear. Coach, talk about uh, your offensive line because I know we have discussed this before. And I know that last year this was a young unit um, that had to grow up as the season progressed. I'm interested to hear about their progress and who is it, who's a guy or two up front that's just going to be a dog for this program next year? Well, the first thing is we got lucky with having to play the youth um, yeah. on, on last year's team. At, at some point last year, we ended up playing four freshmen on the offensive line. 
Um, and that obviously paid off coming into spring. But we, we got we got two big dogs, and, and one of them is Finn Goldinger, and he's been a four-year – he's going to be a four-year starter going into the fall. And, and the other one was Kobe Wallace, a, a freshman who played every snap last year at right tackle. Um, so what we've done for the spring is we moved Kobe over to left tackle. Finn is obviously the center. And then we plug those three freshmen in, uh, or two of those three freshmen in at the other position, and we move Big Mike, um, Big Mike back over from defense, and and, and he, Big Mike Nadjuwani, and I know I'm messing up his name, but he was a, a big defensive tackle that, that saw limited action. And I said to our line guys, we got two great old offensive line coaches. We got Chris Murphy who was back. And then I brought in Clifton Nichols from Space Coast and um, because you know, we needed to shore up what we were doing on the offensive line, but they took Big Mike and they, they made him into a monster. So we got two big dogs in Kobe and Finn. We got a monster in Big Mike. And then we got two freshmen who are going to be really good too as, as, as we move forward. And, and that's, that's the mainstay of, of our offense. Coach, you take a look at, uh, at you know, I, I thought one of the pleasant surprises last year was your defense. Um, I know at times that, you know, there were chunks of games where, you know, some yards and points were given up. But, you know, 20 sacks last year, that secondary flashed a lot of speed, you know, 12 picks. You guys had seven, seven fumble recoveries last year. So you had a plus in the turnover uh, differential last year. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, about the defense and, and guys like an Isaac Hungerbuehler, who I know are going to be just chomping at the bit to get back there uh, on the uh, gridiron this uh, summer. Well, defensively, they got something to prove. Um, they, they were we returned ten of eleven starters, and um, and uh, what, what we've done with those guys, we've moved them around a little bit too to suit their skill sets. Coach Fuller did a great job last year with, with the guys we had and, and playing them in the right positions. And the biggest thing, the biggest turnaround on defense last year, probably from the year before, is how tough they play. They got after it. Like you said, we, we, we won the turnover uh, turnover margin battle. Um, and we got some solid, solid defensive players. Isaac Hungerview was one of them. Uh, Sal Orlando, Noah Rennes. James Olsen, I could go on and on, Cooper Keith, um, Robbie Haley, Namdi is, is, you know, it's defense. We got 10 guys back that can play. And 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 we went into the spring, and, and I talked to those guys, talked to the defensive staff, and said, hey, we got to be a defensive win team. Now. We're going to have a different type of offense, offense and we're going to be a little bit ball control. And we got to stop team. We got to stop the run. We got to play tough. And that's what we did. That's what we did last week. And that was the impressive part. Uh, I'll tell you what. I don't. I don't know if he's going to be playing football next year. I hope he is. But I had the pleasure of watching Dom Leone play baseball this year. And I don't know if Dom's coming out for football next year. But watching him steal home just gave me thoughts of what he could potentially be in that secondary if he plays football next. Dom's year. another one. Dom should be back. And and Dom probably played the season last year at about seventy percent. Yeah. Uh, he, he had a hip injury that didn't heal till well after the season ended. And he was, you know, and, and I say 70%, and that's, that's pretty, that that's pretty loosely. I mean, yeah. Was, I used to fight with him to get him off the field in practice. And then um, you could tell he was hurting in the game, but he, he would not, he would not take himself out. We had a, we had a force. force Coach, you know, yeah. Coach, but, but he should be back. Good. That's good to hear. Cause I, I mean, he is just, an unbelievable athlete watching him steal home uh, in the regional championship game and in, in the regional semifinals in an inside the park grand slam. Those are two things in baseball you just don't see every day. Um, I want to go back to the offensive side of the ball because, again, coach, and unfortunately, all everybody wants to talk about is what you lost. But, you know, I look at your wide receiving core, coach, and I think very quietly when I look at guys like Hancock and Woodruff and and Nelson and guys like that, and I know I'm leaving guys out, and I apologize, but but I think you have an extremely solid core of wide receivers. You no, know, we we're, we we got Jack back, and 
and and Nelson, um, when he's not playing quarterback, will be a slot receiver. Um, Donovan Long's got to step up. And you might see Cooper Keith and, and, and Nandi over on offense a little bit, Robbie Ailey a little bit on offense, and then we're going to have a good, group, a, a, good, a good group of young kids coming in, too. That's good um, to eat here. Yep. Coach, um, you know, obviously, as you head into the summer months, um, you know, you, you, the, your mind, coaches' minds, and I was joking around at the beginning when I said coaches could take a break because, really, this is the time you guys really got to get after it in terms of what you want to accomplish once fall camp starts. Um, what's the root, what's the summer routine for you? What do you do in the summertime to prepare you for camp coming up? Me personally or the other players? Well, you, it, you, you, you personally. Well, well what I got to do is continue to study um, and, and adapt to what we need to do offensively. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a play caller and, and I'm a quarterback coach, so I got to figure out what we're going to do offensively. Um, I'm going to work closely with Coach Fuller to make sure the defense is right. Because the defense is, is, you know, we're going to win games with defense. Right. Um, hopefully we're going to score some points, but we're definitely going to win defense with defense. That's our strong suit, having having 10 starters back. I mean, that's – so I'm going to work closely with Coach Fuller too. What is, you know, I know, you you, you know, that defense, you mentioned earlier they that they have something – to prove and so who who you know as terms of leadership what do you tell these guys returning 10 of 11 how do you hone them in keep them focused on the goal at hand and keep these guys working throughout the summer what do you tell them listen i didn't have to tell them a lot that's good they have something to prove we didn't have an issue with kids being late for practice kids missing practice they showed up every day and they were ready to work and they were ready to get after it and they really wanted to get better. And and, and I've toned things down a little bit with the way we, we practice, not as far as intensity goes, but we didn't, we, I think we might have had maybe a six or seven play series all spring that was live in practice. And they used to get so pissed at me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I feel. Hey, let's work on let's work on our technique. Let's work on our reads and keys, um, and, and then we'll, we'll get the physical stuff down um, moving forward into in, in our preseason camp. And it, it showed a little bit. We did miss a few tackles on Thursday night, and the kids were really upset. And, and I, I just said to them, and I said to the defensive staff, "That's on me. We didn't tackle live, you know, barely at all." Um, in the spring, and, and so that's on me, and that's to be expected. Um, so motivating these kids is, is easy. I mean, they, they're self-motivated. We are now, we're now a senior, a senior-led team. We we had all our captains are back. Um, they, they lost, we lost the captain, um, and the three remaining captains, Cooper, Jack, and Olson, called me up, and they said, Coach. Isaac's going to be our fourth captain. And, like, okay, guys, Isaac's the fourth captain. We, we elected those those three kids last year, and they were adding about Isaac Hungerfield being the captain. Isaac's the captain. But we got, we're got a senior led team. Uh, and, and that's, it makes it a lot easier for, for us as coaches. That's good to hear because I, I, I know how, I listen, I know a lot of these student athletes well, you know, off the football field as well and their parents. And I know how, how, how much last year hurt, you know, internally. And I, and I know how much they just want to get into this upcoming season. And look, coach, I'm looking at your schedule. You start against Central at home, Satellite at home. You go to Rockledge, Titusville, Toho at MCC, at Spruce Creek. You host Osceola, you're at Melbourne, and you're at Merritt Island. That's not exactly an easy schedule. So no. that defense is going to have to step up in a right. big, big, big way. Coach, will this be for you as the play caller and your offense? Obviously, you're going to have to, you know, they don't, you know, you get a kickoff classic and that's it. What's your expectation in terms of the offense? Uh, helping this team get to what the goal is for next season? We're going to have to be a ball control offense. Those quick strike touchdowns, um, 
might be a thing of the past. We saw some glimpses of it on Thursday, um, but we got to be a ball control, huddle up, control the clock, and play good defense team. Something that Vieira hasn't been in the past. I mean, we huddled for the first time um, Thursday. I when's the last time a Vieira team huddled? Do you? <laughs> I, look, it'll, it'll look weird. That's for sure. Uh, there's no. <laughs> as I put the stats up uh, from last year again, obviously uh, the expectation would be to lower those points. You, you look at that right there. Uh, obviously, you still want to be plus in the point column. Uh, I would imagine that uh, in terms of rushing yards and passing yards, th- those numbers will probably look significantly different. Um, and, and again, I, you know, with as good as that defense is, I would expect uh, a good, like you said, a good ball control offense with a defense that creates some opportunistic turnovers, especially uh, with what you have coming back. Coach, do you get a chance? What, we got any vacation plans this summer? What are you going to do to relax? Unfortunately, I, I I planned a vacation over a year ago. I didn't expect to be in this position. Um, and I tried to get my wife to, to postpone it till next summer, and she gave me an unequivocal no. Uh, <laughs> it's, either, it's either I was going or I'm living in the garage. Coach, I'm on her side on that, man. Take I your time, to, go on vacation, and have uh, get some relaxation. I have to take... I, I have to take uh, a week or so off. Yeah, um, this this upcoming month, Coach. I'm, uh, I, I'm not ahead. used. To, I'm not used to that. I think in in, in 38 years, I probably missed 10, uh, 10 off season conditioning days. In you know, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> my well, husband would do it. Uh, no, I'm I'm with you, Coach. Uh, probably a good reason why I'm sitting here single. So you do what you got to do. I definitely hear you, uh, coach. Um, listen, good luck. Uh, obviously, uh, we are proud to announce that uh, once again for, I believe, the fourth consecutive season, Brevard Sports Network will be back broadcasting uh, Vera Hawks football again next it's year. We, 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 yeah, we, we can't wait. And, uh, you know, obviously the Booster Club uh, – you know, a great relationship with them. So we're excited about another season of Vieira Hawks football. And, Coach, we appreciate you kicking off our spring football recaps. And we're going to let you go. But before I let you go, I also know you have a camp coming up. Tell us about this <laughs> Tell us about this camp. <laughs> I don't know how we got, Coach, got named Coach Gullard's youth camp. It was supposed to be a Vieira Hawks junior camp. Um, we're working in conjunction of <laughs> – we're working with it. We're working the camp. We put the camp together in conjunction with um, with, with Vieira Youth Football. I got it's you. July um, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Um, and, and registration is, is ongoing through uh, the Vieira Youth Football website. Got you. Got you. We'll get we'll get you. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get that promoted for you, Coach. And again, we appreciate you. Uh, good luck this summer. Have fun on vacation and. Uh, We'll see you day one of uh, fall camp. Appreciate Thank it. You guys. Thank you. Man. Yes, sir. All right. That's Coach uh, Tony Gullah. And coming up in 36 minutes here on Brevard Sports Now, we're going to end this, but coming up in 36 minutes will be John Holmes from the Titusville Terriers. And we will recap uh, Titusville Spring again, Vieira. Um, it's going to be a different look uh, from what you've seen in the past offensively. Uh, as you heard Coach Gullah say, it'll be weird to see the Hawks huddle, but that's what you're going to see. And Isaac Hunger, Bueller, and company on that defense, uh, the, listen, I know these guys can come through. That's going to be a defense to contend with next year. There's no doubt about it. For Coach Tony Gullah, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. We'll be back in about 30 minutes right here with John Holmes of the Terrier, Titusville Terriers. <laughs>